Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? I'll give you the answer to that question, Mr. Bender, next Saturday. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. Hey guys, it's Will with Terrible Infant. And I hope that you are ready for the most epic, mega, over the top, ching, buck wild, crazy, Criterion Collection Blu ray pickup video that I have yet to do. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Yeah, that's nine releases. And I think it's 11 movies altogether. So it's two different pickups that I never got around to shooting the first video. So I got a Criterion Collection gift certificate for Christmas. And I waited until the February flash sale and I bought five things. And then I got a Criterion Collection gift certificate for my birthday, which is at the end of March. And. I got, uh, the Criterion is currently having actually a 30% off sale because of like the coronavirus thing and people aren't buying as much stuff. They put all of their current stock um, and also upcoming releases at 30% off, I think until the end of April to kind of dry, drive sales basically. Um, and so uh, using the gift certificate I got for my birthday, I picked up four more things. I actually have two more things in the mail that were presents for my birthday that someone bought me, but one of them doesn't come out until June, so they don't ship until June, so I'll have to do another video on that so um I'm, first i'm going to do the stuff that i picked up in february and then i'm going to do the uh the more recent uh pickups so what do we have first la petite soldat this is a jean-luc godard film i think this is his second movie right after breathless and um i've never seen this movie before so this is a blind buy for me i'm a huge godard fan although i should have the caveat that i i think i've only seen like 12 or 13 godard movies which sounds like a lot but godard made an a, just an absolute butt ton of films and he's still making movies um and so I feel like I've barely made a dent in his filmography, but I, I just, I love everything of Godard's that I've seen. And I've done several blind buys of Godard films from Criterion Collection, uh, Made in USA. Um, I say several, and then I can only think, <laughs> I can only think of one. Two or three things I know about her uh, is another blind buy for me. Um, oh, what's the other one? Because um, I have Viva Savi, but I had seen that before. Weekend actually which is my favorite godard film i absolutely love that movie and that was a blind buy for me so i've had tremendous amount of success with uh, godard blind buys from the criterion collection so this came out in 1963 is 88 minutes long and it was unavailable i think on on home release for a really long time in the u.s so this is like a uh, really really big deal that they got this and then it is out now it is on blu-ray super excited to see that what do we have next Switching gears completely, Rumblefish, hell yeah, Francis Ford Coppola. So S.E. Hinton, I think, is the author of the novel. I read both of these books in middle school. The first one is The Outsiders, and the second one is Rumblefish. So if you know, Outsiders is like a very traditional early 80s coming-of-age movie that Coppola made that really predicted basically the decade of John Hughes. And it had a lot of really big future stars in it, like Tom Cruise is in it, and... Um, I mean, you can't even begin to name all of the insanely famous people who are super young in that movie. And so Rumblefish is the follow-up. And so w w Coppola went from making what is a very kind of traditional teen coming-of-age story to what is essentially like the European art house version of an American teen coming-of-age story with like just crazy... Um, it's almost like Raging Bull. Like there are these crazy camera moves focus uh like racks like um there's a lot of uh track work like dolly work on the camera like moving camera and like very traditional kind of like om almost like a combination of old school hollywood and european art house um like the the, the formal aspects of filmmaking but in like this teen movie. So it's like this really, really fascinating movie where you have like this kind of moving, more traditional coming of age story, but then you have all these like incredible formal filmmaking techniques going on. Um, so Francis Ford Coppola and that is Rumblefish. I'm very excited to check out the Criterion Blu-ray of that. Speaking of the decade of John Hughes, Mamma Mia, what do I have here? Hell yeah, The Breakfast Club. So I picked this up for a very specific reason, which is that Arrow just released um, 16 Candle on Blu-ray. And uh, it's, you know, I have a full intention of getting my hands on that. And so um, I thought it would be fun to pick up the 
the Criterion release of The Breakfast Club and then pick up the Arrow release of 16 Candles and just kind of watch them either together or around the same time and then do like a John Hughes kind of retrospective thing because um, I really love those movies. I haven't seen Breakfast Club in uh, like maybe five or six years. I haven't seen 16 Candles all the way through since I was probably at college. But I did see, I watched about 40 minutes of it on Netflix like six months ago, and I really enjoyed it. And that Pretty in Pink I saw pretty recently. I love that movie. So there you go, Breakfast Club. What else do I need to say? I'm really excited about that. Uh, I also have right here another American film. So oftentimes when I do Criterion Collection sales, I buy European and Japanese stuff. So I have a lot of, um, well, as you can see, I've got the Zatoichi box set here. I've got the Godzilla box set there. I've got like maybe 20 Kurosawa movies from Criterion. I've got, you know, like six or seven Masaki Kobayashi films, Ozu, like that kind of stuff. And then like I have a lot of Godard, Truffaut, Fellini. Um, but I don't buy a lot of American films and I just decided, uh, so I've been reading books about American cinema. So one of them is this, which I featured in other videos recently, Easy Riders and Ranging Bulls. I'm also reading City of Nets, which is about Hollywood. This is about Hollywood in like the 70s. Um, City of Nets is about Hollywood in the 40s. And so, uh, and there are certain areas or time periods in American cinema that are big blind spots for me. Um, and so I thought Criterion has a lot of these movies. Um, let's fill in some of those blind spots. So, uh, I mean, obviously 80s movies are not a blind spot for me, but you can't say no to, to Coppola and John Hughes. And so what do I have? I have the player, Robert Altman. I've never actually seen a Robert Altman film. Obviously, I know a lot about Robert Altman. I've read a lot about Robert Altman. Robert Altman is featured a lot in Easy Riders and Raging Bulls because of MASH, Nashville, um, uh, the one with Elliot Gould that I'm not going to remember the name of right now. But um, The Long Goodbye. So like, he's made a lot of really, really famous movies, and he was a big influence on Paul Thomas Anderson. Paul Thomas Anderson talks a lot about him in interviews, and I even worked with him at some point. And um, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson was like huge for me when I really got into cinema, like really seriously. When I was younger, like Boogie Nights is one of my all-time favorite movies. Magnolia, obviously There Will Be Blood, is just like one of the best movies. And so... I've seen pieces of this movie in classes you know, from film school. I saw the opening scene in like a directing class and I've seen some of the other scenes in screenwriting classes. And uh, so Tim Robbins is in this movie and it's about, it's basically like a really dark satire of Hollywood. So I thought I'm reading these books about the history of Hollywood and I want to see more Hollywood films that I'm unfamiliar with. And I uh, also want to dig into Robert Altman. What better place is there to start than the player? So there you go. And what else do I have for you over here? Jackie Chan, as you may know, I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan. I'm actually surrounded by Jackie Chan movies right now. There's uh, uh, Dragons Forever is over here, Crime Story. Uh, I have the 88 films uh, Heart of Dragon release right here, which I'll be talking about. So I, if you don't know, I run Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. There's a YouTube channel. There's an Instagram account. So I'm going to be doing a video talking about this right after I'm done shooting this video. Uh, there's just like a stack of Hong Kong movies right next to me, and it's just got all these Jackie Chan movies and his Dragon Lord. Uh, here's an old DVD of Dragons Forever, which I have the, the Blu-ray release of right over here behind me, which I've also reviewed for Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society, but that's not why we're here. What is this? This is the Criterion Collection, Police Story 1 and Police Story 2 set. These are the two of the best, most iconic, most amazing Hong Kong action movies, stunt movies, martial arts films that you will ever see. They're absolutely incredible classic films, and they're from the 80s. So they're classic 80s action as well. They have those awesome 80s soundtracks. And I'm so, so excited to dig into this. Jackie Chan on the Criterion Collection. It's like a dream come true. Um, and there's a butt ton of bonus features on here, which I'm really excited about. So I will be reviewing this set for Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. I recently ordered the Hong Kong Rescue release of Super Cop, which is also Police Story 3, so the third film in this series. So I'm gonna do a video where I kind of talk about this and that at the same time, not doing reviews, but just kind of showing off the releases and talking about the series and stuff like that. So uh, that'll be up on Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society whenever I get the, the Super Cop release in the mail. I just ordered it like a couple days ago, so. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm so, so excited about this. This is, I mean, these movies are just absolutely incredible. If you haven't seen them and you're a fan of action cinema, if you're a fan of kung fu movies, martial arts, Jackie Chan, action comedy, like any of that stuff, Hong Kong cinema, you absolutely have to see this. So that's the stuff that I picked up in the uh, February flash sale. And then I have the more recent stuff. So there's actually like, this kind of works as a triptych 
three of the movies that I bought. Um, and so I'll just kind of show them off together. They're all classic screwball comedies. There's two Preston Sturges films in here and one Howard Hawks film. This is Sullivan's Travels, absolutely classic screwball comedy. And I love screwball comedy and I love comedy in general from like the 40s, uh, Marx Brothers and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and so in reading City of Nets, which is the book about Hollywood in the 40s, and kind of thinking about comedy and like I'm writing a comedy project right now, like a TV pilot that I'm writing for uh, some producers who were interested in it based on a treatment that I wrote. And so I'm kind of drawing from that era of comedy. And so I wanted to go back and rewatch some of those movies. And so I had this gift certificate to Criterion Collection. And I only have like, I think the previous to this, these, these most recent rounds of films that I bought, I think the only American film I own from Criterion is It Happened One Night, which is a screwball comedy, of course, with, um, uh, frankly, Scarlett It'll Give a Damn. What is that guy's name? I can't believe I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But um, it's a Frank Capra movie. And uh, <clears throat> it's just like a classic. I mean, it's like the classic screwball romantic comedy, basically, along with like bringing a baby, right? And maybe like Philadelphia Story. But um, so I thought I'm going to pick up some some classic screwball comedy, some classic American movies. And so I have Solon's Travels right here. And this actually, here's an interesting thing I learned about Criterion Collection. This got like kind of smashed up in the mail. As you can see, there's like a... The case is kind of busted there. And uh, so I emailed them about it, and they have like a Google form that you can fill out to request new cases. And it has like a drop down menu with every type of case that they offer. And like um, you can request new inserts if those get damaged in the mail and stuff like that. It's really cool. So uh, I'm just waiting for that. More press and surges. Palm Beach Story. So I've actually, I've never seen this movie before. This is another blind buy for me. And uh, so I was reading about this movie, and one of the, the kind of like retrospective write ups on it I read said that. Only a filmmaker as good as Preston Sturges can make a movie this outlandish and preposterous, uh, sit, like sit well with an audience, basically. And like you can watch it and not be like, wait a minute, what is happening? This is just too ridiculous and absurd. And that's what makes me really excited to watch it because I really like comedies that that push that element really, really far to the point that like, like one of my favorite comedies ever is I Heart Huckabees. And a lot of people have problems with that movie. And a lot of the problems that I talk to people uh, about having with that movie are the outlandishness of it. Like it's just too ridiculous, it's too over the top. It like goes too far, like up and up and up as it gets more and more kind of ridiculous, and also pushes like the existential uh, like angst element in the midst of all this insane comedy. And that's what I really love about this movie or that movie. So I'm really excited uh, to watch this because this sounds like it has kind of a similar element to it. And then I got His Girl Friday, absolutely classic. Boom, boom, there it is, Cary Grant and uh, Rosalind Russell, right there. And so. Uh, th there's a bonus feature on here that's um, and it, like uh, this is an adaptation of a play, and um, there's like a pre-code uh, movie, whole movie on here as a bonus feature. That's an ad another adaptation of the same movie that was actually preferred by the playwright, I think. Um, so I'm really, really excited to watch this set. And oh, I think it says it right there. Yeah, the front page. Um, so I'm really excited to to watch both of these, and then I'll probably be back with a, a review of this set. But there you go, His Girl Friday, and then uh, finally. The last movie in my mega mega Criterion Collection uh, Blu-ray pickups is I ch changing gears completely from Jackie Chan and screwball comedy Tarkovsky Solaris. So this was another blind buy. Actually, I bought Stalker. Tarkovsky is one of those filmmakers who I've always felt like I have to be watching his films because so many of my friends love him so much, and he's so well respected, and I read so much about him, and he's such a huge figure in the history of cinema, and I love so many movies, uh, you know, that reference Tarkovsky or that Tarkovsky was was you know was referencing when he made his films, and he's such an important part of the continuum of like international cinema and European cinema that it was always kind of like weighing on me, and so uh, about a year or so ago during a different flash sale, I bought Stalker. And then uh, I watched that when I broke my wrist. I don't know if you heard about that, but you can see my scar. Yeah, so I had surgery and I broke my wrist and the whole, it's a whole long story there. But um, I was laid up on the couch for like a month. I was doing like uh, uh, waiting for the surgery to happen and then the surgery and all that stuff. And so I watched Stalker and it, it that movie just like, it's just, it's hard to describe. It was like a really profound like first viewing experience for me. A great introduction to Tarkovsky. It's such a unique movie with such a unique mood. And so then I watched Andrei Rublev, 
the same thing. It just absolutely blew me away. Um, that was another blind buy from Criterion. And then I picked up The Sacrifice, which is over here behind me somewhere, um, which I have yet to watch because it's it's a pretty long movie and I just haven't found the time. But so another Criterion sale came around and I thought I would pick up another Tarkovsky movie because I've loved his stuff so much so far. And this is a really famous, really well-known film, obviously. And it was remade with George Clooney, Steven Soderbergh. Um, I haven't seen that version of it. But, well, remade. I think what they did was they went back to the novel that this is based on and they readapted it. So this is another long movie. It's 166 minutes, so two hours and 46 minutes, right, is what that comes out to. But I'm really, really excited to watch this and then dig into some of the bonus features. Solaris, Andre Tarkovsky. So my name is Will. That is my epic mega um, 11 movie, uh, 9 Blu-ray Criterion Collection, double, double order pickup. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave us a comment if you feel like it. Subscribe if you feel like it. That always helps, and we will see you next time. <coughs>